In a decade marked by great cultural and societal change, the 1980s at Wright's High School were packed with various achievements, triumphs, and changes. Perhaps the most notable feat in the sports world of the 1980s was the girls' basketball team. The girls' basketball team won a state title in the 1980-81 season under Coach Louise Owen. In addition to athletics, some of the most successful years in the instrumental and vocal music programs came out of the 80s. The band, orchestra, and choir excelled in their arts, continuing successful music programs on the hill, which have all formed integral parts of the Wrights tradition. The 1980s at Wrights included great successes as well as changes for the school. It was a memorable decade for both faculty and students. At the beginning of the decade in the winter break of 1980, Wrights High School experienced a change in principal. Until January 1980, Dallas Chastain had served as Wrights' as principal. In the winter of 1980, Chastain was promoted to vocational program coordinator for the EVSC. Chastain's replacement was Edmund Higgs, a former assistant principal at Central High School. Higgs remained in his new position as Wrights principal until 1987, when he retired and was replaced by Miss Christine Settle. Settle would go on to be the longest serving principal in school history. The early 80s saw one of the greatest sports achievements in the history of Evansville girls basketball. The 1981 Wrights girls basketball team brought home the first state basketball title in the school's and city's history. Under the leadership of coach Louise Owen, the team finished with a record of 26 and one. Owen and the 1981 Panthers beat Marion in the afternoon match at State and routed Rushville 74 to 47 in the championship game. The team was led by players Shelley Brand, Barb Dykstra, Melissa Morrow, and Brenda Butler. Senior Shelley Brand went on to become the tournament MVP and play at the University of Evansville. She was inducted into the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame in 2012. The 1981 team's legacy lives on at Wrights High School and throughout southwestern Indiana. Louise Owen continued to lead the basketball team for two more seasons and finished with a career record of 100 wins and 38 losses. Joe Weber, Owen's assistant, led the team after her retirement. The Wrights boys basketball program saw several changes in the decade. After the 1979-1980 basketball season, coach John Chapman stepped down. In three seasons, Chapman's team had managed only four wins against 33 losses. When the Panthers opened the 1980-81 season, former assistant coach and 1966 Wrights graduate Bix Branson took Chapman's position. Branson had served as freshman coach for two years and reserve coach for three years before taking over the program. After just three seasons, with the program developing, Branson surprised everyone when he stepped down in order to spend more time with his family. This opened the door for another former Wrights basketball player to head the program. Charles Farmer, a 1969 Wrights graduate, had been an assistant coach for six years. Farmer led the program for the remainder of the decade. On the football field, Wrights experienced some highs and lows in the 1980s and witnessed a homecoming in 1983. After a 7-3 season in 1980, Bob Ashworth's 1981 team finished 5-5. Five and five. Things got worse the following year when the team finished 3-5, and five, the first losing season for Wrights football since 1959. Under increasing pressure from a fan base with incredibly high expectations, Ashworth resigned after the 1982 season. When Bill Hape was named to replace him, it meant for the first time that a former Wrights player would be leading the program. After several struggling years, Hape won his first sectional title in 1985. The following year brought incredible excitement when the team finished the regular season undefeated and ranked number one in the state. The excitement was extinguished when they were stunned by unranked Jasper in the sectional finals in 1986. Hape's second and final sectional title came in the 1989 season when the Panthers finished 9-3 and, and defeated the Mount Vernon Wildcats for the title. Individual sports such as gymnastics, wrestling, and track were also successful in the 1980s. 
Kelly Forbes brought home the first gold medal in vault and floor exercise, scoring a 9.2 in the intermediate level at Gymnastics State. Wright's wrestling in the early decade saw several titles as well. In 1981, junior Jeff Harp brought home a state title in the 105-pound weight class. He finished his season undefeated with a perfect 34-0 record. Harp then became the first Evansville wrestler to capture two consecutive state titles by winning state the following year in 1982 in the 112-pound weight class. The wrestling team finished fourth at state in 1981 and fifth in 1982. The following year, Victor Brown won state in the 400-meter dash, posting the ninth fastest time in the history of IHSAA track with a 47.61 second run. The F.J. Wright's choral program flourished in the 1980s. The program was comprised of several different ensembles, including the Wright's Concert Choir, the Glee Club, and Sounds of the Hill. The entire program had more than 250 members and was one of the largest student groups in the school. All of Wright's vocal ensembles were directed by James Haygood from 1971 to 1988 until he left to assume the position as director of choral activities at the University of Southwestern Louisiana. Under Haygood, the Wright's concert choir consistently placed in the top 10 in the state. In 1986, they claimed their first and only state title. Other successes of the 1980s for Wright's choir included performing in Europe, on cruise liners, and in the presence of President Ronald Reagan on October 28, 1986. Haygood permanently left Wright's in 1988 and Rick Raymond became the new director. In addition to the success of the vocal music program in the 1980s, the F.J. Wright's instrumental program excelled in many areas including marching band, orchestra, and concert band. The program saw three different directors early in the decade. In 1984, following in the footsteps of Hugo Schessler, Harry Hart, and Larry Eifler, Mr. Arthur Aidey took the position as the program's director and began his almost 10-year career as the instrumental music director. In the mid to late portion of the decade, the Wright's orchestra and marching band started qualifying for ISMA state competition. In 1986 and into the 1990s, the orchestra placed in the top four ensembles in the state. In 1988 and 1989, the marching band qualified for state competition as well. The greatest year for both the vocal and instrumental music program was 1988. In addition to the marching band advancing to state competition, James Haygood's last choir placed fourth in the state, an 80s orchestra placed third while his concert band placed second at state. No school had ever placed all three music programs in the top five at state in the history of the ISMA contest. While Wrights had joined the National Forensic League in 1957 and had claimed several sectional speech titles in the late 1970s, it was in the 1980s that the Wrights speech dynasty began. Under the leadership of Bob Brumley and Dan Durbin, Wrights experienced its first major speech success. The Wrights speech and debate team won sectional titles from 1980 through 1987. In 1984 and in 1987, Wrights claimed regional NFL titles as well. In 1988, Wrights sent eight students to the National Speech Competition in Nashville, Tennessee, where two Wrights competitors, Darren Haygood and Patty Kelly, won national titles in their respective speech categories. Wrights finished ninth out of 875 schools across the nation in 1988. There were several significant structural changes at Wrights High School during the 1980s. The main entrance of the school got a makeover during the 1980-81 school year. Since the additions in the late 50s, the front door of the school was tucked in a corner underneath the media center. In an effort to make the main entrance more impressive, the area in this corner was terraced with a flat patio that was outlined with concrete boxes where students could sit. A set of wide stairs led from the sidewalk to the patio, and a smaller set led from the patio to the landing outside the main entrance. 
While it was nowhere as dignified as the original 1918 front entrance, it was an improvement over the narrow sidewalk that had welcomed students and visitors through the 1960s and 70s. Another significant building change, it writes, came with the field house renovation in 1987 and 88. The original field house adjacent to the football field was erected in 1936. Most of the old field house was torn down to make way for the new million dollar project. Two locker rooms, two showers, a weight training facility, a coach's office, and an athletic training room were added to make the facility larger and more inviting to players, coaches, and visiting teams. A tradition of excellence in academics, athletics, and arts at Wrights continued throughout the 1980s. Individuals, ensembles, and teams left their legacies at Wrights for many future Panthers to follow. This has been an F.J. Wright's Feel the History production.